in Christ. I want to talk to you tonight um, about specific words that we read in verse 21. The words where, where Paul says, for, uh, for me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Maybe I should ask you this way, do it this way. Can I ask you to close your eyes while I'm asking you this question? I want you to think. Don't want you to be distracted by anything around you. What is the most important thing in life to you? What is the most important thing in life to you? One thing that you would say, I cannot live without that. Now that you've thought about that, I want to ask you, why would that be so important to you? Ask yourself that question and answer it. Why would that be so important to you? Thank you. At some stage or another in our lives, these are the things that we need to ask ourselves. What is the most important thing in life to me? My wife, my husband, my children, my job, my car, my house, my friends, uh, my career. What is the most important thing? Because these are the questions that are so profound to life. Very, very important. And if you do not live a life that are worthy of these questions, you live your life in vain. It means nothing. Because a life that's worth something needs to evolve and ask these questions to, its, to themselves. And then you come to another stage in your life, or maybe I should call it a step up, where you ask yourself, why am I here? That's a huge question. That's almost like Plato and all those guys would ask these questions. And Socrates, why am I here? What is my purpose in life? I mean, to some people, to many people, they don't ask that question. Why do I exist? Why do I have life? Why am I here? They're very important questions. I mean, to many people whom I have seen in the past, they just, not this again. They live to themselves and they, 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 like, they would say that I just exist. I just exist. Because to them, they, they would be like no different to the birds that fly around and that would be hit by a car, or maybe the dog in the, in the backyard that would say, uh, woof, woof, and then after a couple of years, you would dig a hole in the backyard, and you would bury him. Their life has no more value than that. Have you ever asked your question, the question, if I would die, what would happen then? I mean, if my life is not worth living here, or I do not know why I exist on this planet, why would I worry about what happens when I die? But sometimes people do ask that question, what happens to me after this life? What about life after death? Is there such a thing? Is there such a thing as life after death? People would wonder about that. And a person that wondered and spoke about those type of issues would be the Apostle Paul. Because a person that says these words must have really thought about the depth of this, of this statement when he says in verse 21, For me... I cannot talk about anybody else, but I can say to you, for me, 
To live is Christ. And to die is gain. I mean, when he writes this letter, when he writes this letter to this church in Philippi, a small little town somewhere in modern-day Turkey, he sits in a prison in Rome. He was facing death, or maybe he would live. He wasn't sure about his life. And now he writes this letter to this group of Christians somewhere, not in Rome, but in Asia, and he makes this statement. And he wants them to understand that there are so much more in life than just living. He says to me, well to me, life is about Christ. That's what it's all about. I don't care if I live or die. That's what he says to this church. You know, I'm sitting in this prison. I don't know if I'm going to live. I don't know if they're going to kill me. But one thing that I do know, if I'm living or I'm dying, my whole life centers around Jesus. That's the most important thing to me. And then he says these words in verse 23 where he says, I am torn between the two, life and death. He's torn between the two, life and death. He says, I long to depart. He sees, he sees death as a gate. I long to depart and be with Christ. So what he's telling us, he says, when I die, I will be with Jesus Christ. So death is really a gate through which I pass, or a door. He says, which is far better. And that desire is based on verse 21 where he says, to, for me to live is Christ. I mean, Paul wasn't one, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, he wasn't a mentally sick guy that desired to die. He didn't lose his marbles. He knew exactly what life was all about. He knew that life evolves around Jesus. And then he explains to us why is life Christ. And I'm going to talk to you about why life is Christ and why is death gain. I'm going to talk to you about the reality of life can only be experienced in Christ. You see, when we, ent when we are entering, we are entering into a Christmas season. And people would say, joy to the world, peace to the world. And they would say, hope for all mankind. But do you see it around you when you live and you look at people? When you see how drunk fathers bashes their wives? How you see our children are neglected? How you see a man losing his mind? Well, I don't think he lost his mind. Taking a knife, stabbing people in the city. A guy getting into a car, driving into a group of people like a pinball, like pinball or like bowls, and killing people. Is that the hope that we have? Is that what people live for? I don't think so. But we sing of this world. And we sing joy to this world and hope and joy. But you don't see that. I think sometimes we are looking at the wrong place to find the right answer. And maybe to the wrong person to find the right answer. That's why I've asked in the beginning, what is the most important thing or person in your life? And who thought about their husbands or their wives or their children? The thing that can be taken away from you and me. Paul's whole life, before he became a Christian, evolved around his religion. There's a difference between being religious and being righteous. That's why people can come to church, they can read their Bible, they can say some kind of a formula prayer or read a couple of prayers, and they can still not have Jesus in their heart and in their lives. They have religion. But righteousness comes with forgiveness of sin and eternal life. And Paul was this guy, he had religion, he could tell who his ancestors were, he could talk about his nation, we are Israel, we are the chosen people. But Paul did not have joy. He did not have hope and he did not have any meaning in his life. His hope and his joy and his meaning was going around persecuting Christians, taking them out of, out of the synagogues, throwing them in prison, taking stones, killing them. That was his meaning in life. 
until that day when he was journeying from Jerusalem to a, a city called Damascus, which we know today too, journeying to that city to catch Christians there uh, and to throw them into prison and to kill them. And then at some stage on that journey, the Lord Jesus himself in bright shining light appears to him. And he falls to the ground and he says, Who are you, Lord? And now things start to change. Things start to change. That's why when you read a little bit further in this letter, in the chapter, chapter 3, verses uh, 4 to 8, he says, I consider them rubbish when, uh, uh, that I may gain Christ. And he talks about all these things that he could boast about. His ancestors, his circumcision, his qualifications, his education, all those things that were important to him, the most important. Now he says, just toss it away, it's rubbish. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing to me. The most important thing to me now, after that encounter with Jesus and his repentance and his new life, all of a sudden changed from the things that he had as religion change into righteousness, having Jesus in his life. Because when you have Christ in your life, your life takes on a whole new meaning. All of a sudden, your outlook in life changes. Your values change. Your goals in life change. Your desires change. Your priorities change. That's what Jesus does to a person's life. And you don't look at life the way you used to do. That's why Jesus came in John 14 verse 6 when he says, Jesus told them, talks to his disciples, his followers, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. And that's why Paul says, for me to live life, is Christ. Because you walk from darkness into light. Jesus changes your whole life and He gives you meaning. But it, it transcends to something much greater than that. It transcends to something much greater than that. And that is the second aspect of this verse where He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I mean, death is the most saddest effect that somebody can experience, I believe, in this life. My heart goes out when I have a funeral and I look at people and their sadness that they experience. But you know what? When I look at many people, and I have attended some funerals, of people who are not Christians. They have no hope. They have no joy. And they have no expectation. But to them, death, to them, death is the final. It is the end. There's nothing more. It is the most saddest and the most painful event with no hope. There is a lot of uncertainty. And when they think of death, if you do not have Jesus in your life, death is not just final. It is something to fear. Because for 40 years, for 30 years, 20 years, for 60 years, people do their rushing and they do their working and they do everything and they try to gain out of life as much as they can. They party as hard as they can. And they holiday as hard as they can. Or they climb the corporate ladder and, ladder and ambition so high, as high as they can, because they know when they die in their heart and in their mind, everything stops. Think about that, beloved people. Think about that. And that's why people hold on to life so dearly. But Paul, the guy that writes this letter to the Philippians, this apostle, this called, this anointed person, gives a totally different angle, a totally different swing or spin on the outlook in life. He says, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And as I've said, he didn't lose his marbles. Not that he just got to be confused. He knew that to die is gain. 
And then I ask myself this question. And you need to ask yourself this question. Would death for you, would death for you be gain? Would it be something that you could look for? Would it be something that you can win something by? That is to gain. What would you win by dying? In verses 21 to 24, he says the following, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now if I live in the, uh, on in the flesh, this means fruitful work for me. Because he's working amongst people to bring them to Christ. And that is fruitfulness to him. And I do not know which one I should choose. What is the best for me? If I live... I can work with the people around me and in, through Asia and through the whole of Roman Empire and I can win many people to Christ and I can build up the saints like I'm doing now, preaching God's word and they understand and they grow stronger in their faith. That is really great. That's what he says. In verse 23 he says, I am torn between the two. Should I really strive to live? Or should I just say, Lord, whatever you will, if you can take me, I'll, I want to be with you. Because I'm torn between the two. I long to depart. There's the gate again which he's talking about. The gate of death. It's just the gate. It's not the end. It's not final. It's just the gate where he passed through. He says, I long to depart and be with Christ. That's how he looks at death. That's how we should be looking as Christians at death. It's like this door... And you open up that door on this side is life. On the other side, which people call death, is really the presence of Jesus. That's what Paul is saying. I mean, I can understand why he's torn between the two. I mean, the people gave him so much grief. They didn't listen to him. They were always, some of the people against him, standing against him, saying things against him, giving a couple of whacks. Now and then there's a couple of Christians that gives him joy like the guys in Philippians. But most of the time he had grief. Why would he stay on this side of life, Chris, and not step through the door and be in the presence of Jesus? That's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. But Paul loved these people. He realized that there is a door and he needs to step through that door. That door that was, that was death. Why is death such a, a dreadful thing? When he says, when we talk about dying and death. You know, there were no death in the beginning in this world. We were all born, or, or we were supposed to be born, to live in the presence of God. But our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, chose to do the opposite of what God desired man to do. And through their disobedience, sin slash death came into their lives. The first thing that happened is people said, well, death is death. No, death has different dimensions. Now you're going to die, God says to Adam and Eve. And it took them a couple of hundred years, but they eventually they died. They're not here anymore. They died. But the reason why they physically died is because they were spiritually dead. That is the reason. And because they were spiritually dead, they would die physically. And after they stepped through that door as sinners into death on the other side of life, they step into eternal death. That is the absence of Jesus and of God. So you would die physically, you would die spiritually, and you would die eternally. And all three of them were conquered by Jesus. That's why Paul had this hope. Because Christ is the victor of all. And I'm going to close with this, these verses from 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 51 where he says, Listen. Paul says tonight, listen. I'm telling you a mystery. I'm telling you a secret. We will not all fall asleep. 
I mean, we will not all die and then Jesus will come back. Some people will live and others, maybe you and I and our loved ones before us, they have passed away. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. We will all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Because Jesus will return, and we will hear His voice, and we need to be ready like that. Bam! And it's too late if you want to rectify anything. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptibly, incorruptible, and we will be, uncha- and we will be changed. For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility. And this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. We will die. Touch yourself. And you say, you will die. And you will. You will die. But there's something wonderful. That this temporary mortal body will be changed when Jesus comes back into something that will never ever die as we have a glorified body. And then this corruptible body is clothed with the incorruptibility and this mortal body is clothed with immortality. Then the saying that is written will will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. There is no more victory in death. We will not end up in hell but we can end up with Jesus. Where death is your victory, and where death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of death is the law. But, I love it when Paul comes in with that word, but. It's like when all things are lost, and then the Spirit of God just puts in Paul's heart the but. Thanks be to God who gives us victory, there is that gate again, eternal life, victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now I'm going to come back to that question again. What is the essence of life? What is the most important thing in your life? Is that Jesus? Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, Can you see how it all comes together in these words from Paul, where he says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die when I step through that door, that gate, is gain. When you have found Jesus in your life, you will never ever again look at death as something that has no hope, of something that's eternal and will never change, because Jesus gives meaning. He gives hope. He gives joy. And that's the message tonight that Paul wants to bring through this letter to you and to me. Is that we can have life. There is purpose. There is meaning. And there's understanding in life. This life is precious. Because we need to live it to the glory of our God. And that happens when we find forgiveness. And we surrender our lives unto Jesus. And then in Him we have eternal life. And death has no victory over us. We're all going to grow old if Jesus does not return. And we're all going to die. The bottom line is this. Is Christ your life? And to die again? Is that the essence in your life? Well, that's an important question you need to ask yourself. Nobody can answer that for you. You need to answer that question. But if you would like help, I'm more than willing to help you. Let's pray.